Welcome back to the Japan Archives, episode 61. But that's everything from me because it's Heather's show today. Well, Thomas, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Only update is I've started reading the Shepherd's Crown, the Terry Pratchett book, his final one before he passed、mm. away. So excited to start that, but also kind of sad to know that it's the final story. But.、Yeah. Bittersweet. You know,、hmm. I kind of grew up with Terry Pratchett. Like, my dad had loads of his books. So it was kind of like one of the first fantasy books I read.、Aww. So I liked it for many, many years. But what about you? We're okay. No baby yet. No baby yet. Still, still probably got a little while to go.、Mm-hmm. But doing healthy, baby's healthy. Actually, gotten a lot of projects done too. So my mind feels more clear, which is super exciting. And I'm like looking forward to getting more, more of the podcast stuff done before、um, having a baby and probably going to have to take a, a little bit of a break. I'm, I'm sure. Hopefully not, not too long, but it's, it's going to depend. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that you, you'll need to take a break, like new baby, new schedule. So like we've been preparing for this. So hopefully, no, we have to. We've made the plan this week. We're going to try and this week coming. Probably gonna try and get three episodes done in a week. So we're way ahead just in case you do need to take that like two week break. We'll still have episodes for everyone. Definitely. We've been talking about this for a while. So I mean, we got some heads up for this event. So we were behind the scenes talking quite a bit. So yeah, I, it's one of my goals I, just to figure out, which, you know, this past couple of years has been figure things out. And this is just another something to figure out. So. The beginning of this month, we had some holidays. So essentially, you, you started your job and then got a break. <laughs> I did. I did a week and then I had a few days holiday. It was great. It was a great start <laughs>、yes. to a new job. And that's, that's what happens because in, in Japan, the,、like、the fiscal calendar starts, it, it ends in March and begins in April. So school starts, businesses start, like the, the freshers. The people who graduated college or university and are starting a new job, they all start in April. Or if you have to get shifted to a different branch of your company or a different country, you start up in April. But the end of April marks the beginning of one of the favorite holidays, which is called Golden Week. And most Japanese people have a week or several days off during this time. And I do remember posting, I think on Instagram, and I had some, some friends ask, what is Golden Week? Well, I, I actually wanted to look into it myself. And I think we had talked about looking into Golden Week as a possibility. So I did some research. I learned lots of things. I fell down some rabbit holes. I've included some of the rabbit holes here, but I just scratched the surface. So I'm going to jump in with Golden Week. It's a pretty new holiday, relatively, for Japanese history because it didn't really get its start until 1948. In 1948, the Japanese government established a public holiday law, and there were nine official holidays, as well as a, de- a decree that stated that when a national holiday falls on a Sunday, the next Monday is a compensatory. Comp- comp- compensat- <laughs> I can't say the word. Oh, it's great. It's good times.、Uh, a, com- a compensated holiday called a Furukai. Kyujitsu. So I think that was, that's really nice that, you know, sometimes if、uh, Christmas falls on a weekend, like in America, and you work in a company, sometimes you get that next day off and sometimes you just kind of lose a holiday. But in Japan, it's at a law that says, oh, if it's on a Sunday, you're going to get that next holiday, that next day off. So thank you, Japan. We appreciate that. There are, even though this is called Golden Week, there's only four holidays. Uh, the first one starts April 29th, and this is called Showa Day. So that's like an emperor day. So it, it's actually the birthday of Emperor Hirohito, but, and it was celebrated up until 1989 as his birthday. But after he died, 1989, it became Greenery Day or Midori no Hi. And then in 2007, it changed from Greenery Day to Showa Day. And it is a reflection on the life of Emperor Hirohito, as well as all of the events that occurred, occurred during the Showa period in Japanese history, which,、uh, you know, quite, quite a bit happened during the Showa period. Yeah. And any, any events that you can think of <laughs> during Showa? 
some of the big events. There was at least World War Two that happened during Shoah because it was quite a long period. So the Shoah period had a lot of big changes for Japan. Obviously, World War Two, nuclear bombs. I'm trying to think of more light-hearted things that happened. Well, in this period. one big one was probably. Like just TV and movies, and even like the like a lot of Western clothing came here and became popular. Like a cultural revolution. When did Studio Ghibli start? Was that Showa? Yeah, yeah, it was Showa. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Cause I I want to talk about the history of of uh, Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki as well, but I. I do know he got his start oh, it's over 80 i believe maybe like 1950s 1960s he worked for other studios and eventually established his own i believe i have to go double check my my knowledge on that but yeah it's right smack in the middle of showa checking now showa finished 89 and studio ghibli was founded 85 so just before showa ended about four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had to go back and talk about him as well. So there you go. They had the Olympics, didn't they, in yeah. Japan during the Showa period? They had a Winter Olympics. No, Nagoya. Nagano. Somewhere cold. Nagano. Thank you. Nagano. Oh, in the 1960s, the Summer Olympics. Where was that held? Also Nagano. Probably not. Tokyo? It was Tokyo, I think. Yep. I got confirmation. And also the correct date, 1964 Tokyo Olympics. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of stadiums. Like, uh, like was it in Yoyogi Park? There's quite a few like, empty stadiums that they're not, well, they weren't going to use for the 2020 Olympics and now 2021 Olympics. So they built new stadiums. It will happen. They will make it happen. Whether it should happen is a different thing entirely. <laughs> That's a story for another day. Okay, so that that yeah, a lot a lot happened. Even even more happened and we ha we haven't touched on a lot of modern Japanese history, but there is a there's a Very lot true. that happened during the Showa era. I mean, a lot of, that happened during the Heisei as well. And then Reiwa has been that's been only 3 years and so eventful so far. <laughs> well, technically only 2. The first year of Reiwa didn't technically exist. Oh. At least on paper. At least because in my school, Reiwa started like after, like halfway through the next Heisei. So on paperwork, oh, yeah. on all documents and things, like it was still classed as Heisei, even in Reiwa 1. So like at my school, we, we jumped straight to Reiwa 2. Like we'd never had the first Reiwa year. Trying to figure out the different, the different um, eras and writing paperwork and then figuring out your birthday and which year it is. It's... That's it's it's very interesting. Mine's super easy to remember. I'm very lucky in mine. Yeah, I'm not saying mine. So back to Showa Day. <laughs> <laughs> it switched birthday Midori no Hi to Showa Day, and that's the first. This is the start of Golden Week. And interestingly enough, I was talking to a I'm I'm not going to name this specific Japanese person, but uh. When I informed them April 29th was Showa Day, they said, no, it's Greenery Day. I'm like, no, it used to be Greenery Day. In 2007, it became Showa Day. And they were impressed that they had to go check to be sure. And I pulled out my calendar and sure enough, yep, on my calendar, Showa Day. Which kind of goes to show you that even though Golden Week is a very, very, very uh, popular holiday season, not everyone knows are really needs or knows what each day is made up of it's just a, a series of holidays and they're not all celebrated as those days mm. specifically yeah i suppose for some people they just know it as i'm getting a few days off they won't necessarily learn what each day signifies it's just a day off i mean work. it changed so that's a little bit about showa the day we could talk a lot more about emperor hirohito but i think that's that's another episode <laughs> so the next holiday we got is we're skipping ahead to May 3rd, and that is Constitution Day. Why are there no special named days for May, like, 1st and 2nd? Nothing special, they just, just one-day holiday, back to normal, then three days holiday. The Constitution uh, was, was, was ratified in 1947, but they, they designated May 3rd in 1948, I believe. I have to go back and double-check my sources, but they... As part of the, you know, the Golden Week got its start as a public holiday law. So they designated nine official holidays throughout the year, which has changed. I think it's 15 or 16 now. So 
May 3rd was to celebrate the new constitution that was ratified after World War II. It commemorates, commemorates the day that the constitution took effect, which was... Okay. Yeah, it took 1947 and then... Oh, it was actually ratified in 1946. And again, we start touching on because we're we're going to different things in Japanese history and we could go down rabbit holes for each of these because I did not write much about this one because I think the constitution, that's another topic as well. So we could spend a lot of time on that. So instead, we'll just talk about it as a day to commemorate the constitution, uh, which was changed after World War II. And there's a lot that can be said about that as well, but that's yeah, that's another day. That would that will be an interesting topic. The Constitution af after the events of World War Two. So that's May third, May fourth, and um, not just Star Wars Day. It is Midori no Hi or Greenery Day. Now this this is also fun. So because we you know we had Showa Day, which changed. Greenery Day was originally just another day. We had April 29th, we had May third, and then May fourth was just go back to work. But the government made this a national holiday since it was between two holidays. Now from 1989 to 2006, it was a kokomi no kyujitsu or just a national holiday. No reason, just right. it's a holiday. You're welcome. But then in 2007, it was officially made a public holiday. And that's when Showa, the Greenery Day became Showa Day, and then May 4th turned into Greenery Day or Midori no Hi. So Midori no Hi has been two dates in Japanese history, April 29th, and now it's May the 4th. And the, the person I spoke to, which will re rename, re remain nameless, did not realize it had switched. I was going to say that a couple times just because I'm, I'm really tickled that I was able to share something. It was really exciting. I was like, oh, I've, I found out something. I love research. Now, Greenery Day. I don't know if you know about this day or what it's about, but I'm going to ask you about it and see if you could. I'm sure you could figure it out if you don't know. Okay. As in why mm, it's called yeah. Greenery Day. Um, well, before I never really understood why it was called that. I didn't realize it was translated as Greenery Day. I just always read it as Green Day. And I was like, apart from that being a band. An American band, I was like, well, for a start, my phone's on vibrate, so let me just turn that off. Sorry about that, people. Let me just sort my life out. There we go. So I was very confused why it was just like a color holiday, but with it being greenery, Japan does love its cherry blossoms and autumn viewings and things. Does it continue on with their whole like love of nature kind yes, of thing? Yes, you have it right on the nose. It's a chance to go outside, appreciate nature and its beauty, and to reflect on the benefits and loveliness of nature. And in, in, a, in a way as well, it could be said to honor the Showa Emperor Hirohito as he had a great love for plants. Ah, okay. So you have kind of a little bit, but, but again, most people might not realize what the day is possibly about. And as far as I know, there's no official food or unofficial food or any activity you might do besides going outside and being outside. But I mean, in, in May, early May, generally, you're going to go outside because it's really pretty usually right now. It's a nice time of year. It's a good time between the coolness of spring ending and just before the sweltering, humid summers start in Japan. So And some, some of the, well, you can still have a little bit of kafun show or you know spring allergies, but if you're one of the lucky ones who gets the early one versus the late one, like this the the early one versus like I think the cedar one is the late one. If you have the cedar allergy that's later, then you might not enjoy it. But if you get the early allergy, then you're really enjoying having that break from sneezing and cough and snorting and sneezing. But that's that's May fourth. Now May fifth. May fifth. The Revenge of the Fifth, to continue your Star Wars theme. Oh, that makes me so happy. This is this has to be my my biggest rabbit hole I fell down. So we're going to go, we're not just going to talk about this holiday. We're going to talk about some other holidays because this holiday. So they're kind of connected into this one. Sort of. But this this holiday, actually, and do you know what the, what day this is? Our Children's Day. It's the oldest holiday. It predates the other ones by, we're looking around 
the Nada period and even maybe a little bit before the Nada period. So Children's Day. Now, this is also interesting because some of the, the origins, we've got a lot of origins and we also have, mm, I've seen some conflicting information a little bit between some of my sources because I've seen this holiday being stated as originally just for boys, but then I've also seen it stated as for children. Now, I will say in 1948, the Japanese government established it as Kodomo no Hi to celebrate the happiness of all children. Now for this holiday, you've probably seen like carp streamers and pictures or images of Japan, or if you follow you know, Japanese um, bloggers or bloggers or Instagram or whatever you have, you've probably seen the pictures around this time of year. Now families who have children fly these streamers outside um, for a, a carp for each child. But then again, I've also seen it stated that the carp is flown for whatever boys are in your family. So for this, I think it might be depending on your family's tradition or where you're located, or at this point, maybe because things have been sort of mixed together. So you might fly them for all of your children, or you might fly them just for the boys. But something else they do do, do do, something else they do, <laughs> is put up something else that they do is to put up samurai dolls or samurai armor and i believe those are just for the boys because hina matsuri which is in march is girls day and girls put out the family puts out little dolls for the girls so i believe the samurai dolls are for the boys and then we have hina matsuri for the girls but the carp streamers could be for both but it might be more angled toward just boys so yeah when i was living in iwate and i saw it for the first time i was whenever i asked like what it was for i was told it was more for like a boys festival because may maybe it's also regional yeah i've heard boys festival as well but then when i saw that it was established in 1948 for all children so i'm wondering if because we had Hina, Hina Matsuri, that it maybe morphed more into boys day but then again, it might have predated because Children's Day was made in 1948, but it's actually based on or merged with a, another holiday, the one from around the Nara period. Now, this is called Tango no Seku, and it itself is based on a Chinese holiday for the Dragon Boat Festival. So we have a little bit of predating. The holiday that predates the holiday that predates this holiday and yeah it this is it, this got really interesting because dragon boat festival now thomas back in the early part of this year you did a lovely episode that i thoroughly enjoyed about the origin of pokemon and i, oh, I yes. feel like you know this already i feel like you do or you might have forgotten. We, we ran out of time because there was a few more we were going to talk about. <laughs> but Magikarp. Do you know about Magikarp? Magikarp, the little useless fish that turns into a powerful dragon. Yeah, do you know why? I feel that you're going to tell me it relates to this Dragon Boat so Festival. You're, I even put in my notes, <laughs> ask Thomas about this. He probably already knows because of Pokemon. I was like, you already know this. No, oh, okay. Well, okay, fine. I'll tell you. Well, this is, <laughs> this is, yeah, I think if you had done done a few more Pokemon, you would have encountered this because there's a Chinese legend mm. that states the carp, the carp can swim upstream. It can become a mighty dragon. Ah, okay. Hmm. They base this on its evolution off of this fable. Interesting. So this, okay. This tale is symbolic of children growing up well. So you have, you know, your child growing into a, you know, mighty right. powerful dragon. Kind of cool. I, 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 when I, I found this, I was super, super excited. Like it, it gets, and I'm, not, I'm not done yet. I'm not done either because there are other four festival days that go with this one festival day. So we have Hina Matsuri, Tanabata, and then a holiday I have never heard of before and neither had the professor called Kiku no Seku or the Chrysanthemum Festival, which is held, I think, like September 9th. So if you go to a, a shrine or a temple, you can experience it, but it's not a national holiday, it's not a public holiday, and it's not well known as far as I know, unless at least, at least the professor hadn't heard of it. 
And then New Year's was the last festival day. Okay. So during Koromo no Hi, there is some special food that is eaten. So during Koromo no Hi, you've got a couple of foods that you might eat. One is called chimaki, which is a rice cake, rice cake, rice cake that is wrapped by a bamboo leaf and steamed. And then kawashi, kashiwa mochi, which is a red bean and rice cake. That, oh, I said rice cake again. That's awesome. It's a red bean and rice cake that's wrapped by a kashiwa leaf. I think I've had chimaki before. Ooh, I, I didn't get a chance to eat any of those things this year because I'm trying to be a. I, I saw it in the grocery stores and I really wanted it, but I, I'll just wait for next year. But do you like red beans? Like red bean desserts? I mean, I'll eat them if they're there because it's a dessert and I love dessert. But it wouldn't be my go to choice. To me, it meh. My expert opinion there for you all. <laughs> so take it or leave it. Like it doesn't really taste of anything. It just. Mm, mm. We are going to talk about red beans and culinary history at some day because I really want to go into the origins of how beans became a dessert because it's fascinating. But that's another, that's another show. Okay. Back to, <laughs> back to Koromonoki. So those are the holidays, but. I haven't talked about why Golden Week. Why was Golden Week named Golden Week? Yeah. Okay, I have a quick question. So you said you said there are four other festivals that go with it. Like, what exactly did you mean by like there's they go five, with it? Like they're all yeah, connected five, in like, a way. Big festival days that are in Japan is and Koromonohi is part of those. Oh right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not only okay. is this holiday part of golden week it's part of another set of holidays celebrated well mostly celebrated throughout the year oh so this is like one of the big five yeah that's that's where it got huh <laughs> and it's surprising how old this holiday actually is or at least the, the origins of this holiday for you know centuries at this point and with pre, pre kind of predates nada even in a way mm. But the name, Golden Week, why do we have Golden Week? That's, it's really called Golden Week here. It's not, it's not a translation. It's called Golden Week. Yeah, that always interested me. Like, it's an official Japanese holiday, but the name of it? The, the Golden Week itself is, is not an official designation per se. It's used to indicate the national holiday. So I think the the government says it now, but they don't recognize it. It's not official. It's like an unofficial because they haven't, you know, had a meeting on it. They just all call it that. If you've ever watched, got a chance to watch the uh, the government in action, it's really interesting. It's interesting. Oh, no. Yeah. It's so boring. They just sleep. It's just a bunch of old men and women aren't allowed to speak. So, no, thank you. Many long speeches. Many, many long speeches. And... Golden Week. Okay, I gotta get back to Golden Week. Why are we calling Golden Week Golden Week? Well, for that, we have the movies to thank. So the term Golden Week is actually a moniker. I think moniker is the right word to use. The name is Hideo Matsuyama, and he was a director of the film group Dai. So around 1951, because so we have, you know, the holidays established 1948. Well, in 1951, there is a filmmaker called Bunoku Shishi. He saw record sales for his film. Apparently, these national holidays were a very good time to go see movies. And Matsuyama-san, you know, probably trying to capitalize on uh, you know all those profits to get even more people excited to come to the movies, more than likely, because you know if you're seeing record profits, you you like those. You would like more of them. Well, he came up with the name based on a radio phrase called golden time and golden time was the i think in the evenings like the radio programs that brought all the listeners so he he got the gold and he ran with it and then coined the phrase golden week not just that but he also apparently named a silver week in the fall but that never really caught on i wish it did it would have been nice to have had another three-day holiday in japan because you don't get many holidays in japan they don't like to take days off 
And then as an American, I'm amazed at how many holidays they get. <laughs> but as an American, my friends in the UK, you guys get so many holidays. It's so beautiful. We do so many, so many bank holiday Mondays that we get off. It, so nice. It, so for me, Japan's like, wow, look at all the holidays we get. And then you guys are like, you guys don't get any holidays. And just cr I cry in America. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it's good. It's good for me. Because we got the three three holidays in the year, so you know, Oban and Oshagatsu, as well as Golden Week. Now, Golden Week itself is a huge travel holiday. Well, it was in 2019. But why Golden Week seems like more of a travel holiday than either Oban or Shogatsu. Both of those holidays, they're major holidays, but usually you go back to your home or go back to your family and you spend some of the time with your family. But Golden Week is the longest holiday in which you can do as you like. So there's no like family obligation. There's no really like formal obligations or traditions that you have to follow. The weather is also really mild and it makes it perfect for hiking and exploring. And it's also, like I mentioned at the beginning, and you mentioned at the beginning, it is the first holiday that you get in the fiscal year. So a lot of college and university students uh, are traveling with new friends for the first time. And like we mentioned before, not all places get the full golden week. Some companies only allow time off for the official holidays and don't give you the extra days off. Some companies will have you take a required holiday so that you get a full week. And then students in like elementary through high school have to go into school on April 30th to May 2nd, unless those holidays fall on the weekend. But for everyone, and we're gonna wrap this up by saying, getting those precious days off is truly worth more than gold. Really? I had to do it. I was like, how do I wrap this up? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. Ha. <laughs> Well, you'll be happy to know next year, April 30th and Mar May 1st are a Saturday and a Sunday. Ooh. So I guess you get a, you get the, the holiday actually is a bit longer than usual because yeah, it's right. You, it's a week, but you only get the week if those non-holiday days are technically on a weekend. It's the only way you'll actually get your week unless you work for like a nice company that actually lets you off on those days. But that's very rare in Japan. Yeah, the major companies, I believe, will do that. But some of the smaller ones, it, de it depends. Like another professor does get that full time off, which is really cool. <laughs> that was great this year, although he did work, so. Yeah, in my old school, we used to get the whole week. Um, but I think that's mostly like, it was just how our school worked because we had dormitory kids. So it didn't make sense to send them home for a day and then they have to come back and then they have to go again. So they just gave us the week. So we were lucky yeah. in that regard. This year was a little bit more traveling than last year was. I do wonder how many people still travel. The numbers traveled, were though, up a little bit from last Japan. year, but they weren't huge. That's, they yeah. were still down. Yeah, the, the trains overall. were down. Mm, that's good at least because... We ain't getting our vaccines here anytime soon. Any any other questions or any any comments about? Well, the thing that surprised me the most was actually that there was a silver week. But if I'm if I'm honest, it it doesn't surprise me because a lot of the time in Japan, when you have a golden something, mm. there's always a silver one associated. Like in Tokyo, you have Kinkakuji oh, and yeah. then you have Ginkakuji. You have the golden pavilion and the silver pavilion, so it often does come in pairs. So. I was surprised that it did almost exist, but also I'm kind of not surprised because, yeah, gold and silver always go hand in hand in Japan. I'm not sure why, but that seems to be a thing. That's true. There's an onsen town that has a gold onsen and a silver onsen as well. Oh, well, there you go. But no, that was that was interesting. It was a nice, a nice brief introduction. Well, at least in regards to like a the other festivals you were mentioning like we could probably give them their own thing which is cool but i'm glad we did this now like you said golden week has just passed like a week and a bit ago so it's themed for now and i think literally every year we've always wondered like 
why are these days called these days? So to finally have an answer is nice. And it was fun to do this research. This was a little more more lighthearted and then rabbit holes. So what? It, well, we always do that. Like anything we research, we always find something else. Yeah, like one thing always inspires us to have ideas for a future episode, which is which is good. Like it's, it, we, we're finding more and more, but then we end up doing those. And then I look at all my books on my shelf and it's like, I haven't touched them yet. We haven't talked about them. Like, We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> we're still learning oh, as we go as gosh, well. Oh, gosh, yes. Which is why we have so much fun doing this as I, well. Because, like, we're doing this research fresh every week. Like, mm -hmm. we might know a few things, but, like, what, 80% of it's new for us every yeah, week as well. Yeah, and to, to get the chance to delve into some of these topics, and for, for a reason, because you can do it, you know, and that often happens where you just, oh, I'm going to look this up. But then to, to study it and write it up, you, it kind of sticks around a little bit longer as opposed to, oh, this is interesting, and then, which is mostly what I do on... <laughs> like news aggregate websites, but, but to kind of get that chance to study and in detail. So I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and say, thank you so much, Thomas. That is my portion. And what do you have for us today? So I tried to find a poem connected to golden week failed miserably, but it kind of makes sense with it actually being a relatively mm -hmm. new festival. So in the end, I try to find a poem that talks about Ooh. relaxation. So kind of connected. And I found a poem, which is technically an autumn poem, but it is a relaxation poem. So I'm going to class it as themed for the day, especially considering silver wheat would have been in the autumn like this poem is. So I'm taking it. So I'm going to read for you. I'll tell you who it's by after. So let me know what you think it is. Translates to, let's try with my terrible Japanese. Kumo ori ori, hito o yasumuru, sukimi kana. Oh, okay. So if that, so kumo is, is this animal or is this another? Because we have um, kumo is spider, if it's going to the animal side and then ori ori that sounds like onomatopoeia but maybe spinning and uh we have people maybe people resting or people sleeping and then we have like under a moon you know you're pretty close if oh. i'm honest like so kumo you have the spider but in this context clouds <gasps> like ori ori is being translated as from time Ooh. to time you got it right with people relaxing and like the, the tsukimi kana is the moon viewing, which is like a thing you do in autumn. So the poem translates as the clouds from time to time allow folk to relax when moon viewing. Oh, that's so cool. And this poem comes from 1685 and is by Basho. That makes sense. That totally makes sense. Oh, you got a bus show. It's been so long since a bus show. Oh. Sometimes I'm like, I wish it was a new poet, but I found a poem which was themed that I wanted to to, to do for today. And I was like, we're back to bus show. I don't have a problem with that, really. <laughs> I feel relaxed about it. I think bus show has so many poems. And just, just lovely. So yeah, that was my poem for you for today. I'm glad I found one that is themed at least a little bit it really is it, it's and oh i love i love the images of the clouds too because i'm imagining when you're you're moon vo moon viewing <laughs> <laughs> Mo moon viewing why is that hard to say i don't know you have to crane your neck up and go away from the microphone and stare up at the moon and the cloud goes over oh thank goodness i can put my neck back down and get the little crinks out of my neck <laughs> See, in my brain, when in my imagination, when someone's moon viewing, I'd just be laying down on the ground uh, to watch the moon. I, but but still, the clouds would give you that break to like look away or turn away or talk drink to someone. Your sake. Drink your sake, of course. I always picture people on like the, not Ginkan, but like the little back porch area and uh, 
sitting there and looking up mosquitoes. So many mosquitoes. Well, oh, mosquitoes. I've already but already seen some in my house. I saw one when I was at work the other day. It's, <sighs> it's that it's time. time. It's time. But Thomas, that poem was awesome. I loved it so much. That's Thank beautiful. you. I'm glad you liked mm. it. Well, gosh, we've done an episode. We've done a poem. I, I, I think, is that all for today? I did it, okay. yes. Well, th there you go. I, I'm going to try to wrap it up. Let me see if I can do it, Thomas. <laughs> a challenge. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your poem. That was, I, again, I will re reiterate how great it was and how lovely. And I need to have that copy so that I can memorize it. That's all for Golden Week for now. We'll probably revisit some of these topics again at a later date because that's how we do. And until next week, that's all for me. And that is all from me. So until then, next week, guys. Matane. I love that you always wave at the camera when you do that. <laughs>